when I sit with these guys and rehearse the story, and when I reread now this is the thir third rendition of the script, uh, I pause, I belch, I burp, I cry, I just, and I shake my head that this really happened. And is it still happening? Because the story isn't over. Oh, y'all ain't seen nothing yet. The story ain't over. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> I have to tell myself that, that the end is, is Jesse, who's, there, who's portrayed in the movie. And uh, uh, it's a tender part, it's a tender space, it's a tender place. I forgot how much I talked to Marcus about my story. And so when I reread the script, I forgot all that was in there. And we haven't decided, they haven't decided yet who's going to play his part. I don't have those decisions. I don't make those decisions at all, but I, they, are, they run things past me. We do know, we think pretty much that Robert Redford will play Oral Roberts, and that kind of adds a lot of, of uh, prestige to the pro project as it is. And uh, I wouldn't have even thought of Chiwetel, but I saw him playing uh, 12 Years a Slave. I didn't realize I'd seen him in so many other movies. We have a real celebrity in our midst. And I want you to know it at my house yesterday, he wolfed down some colored greens. <laughs> we brought chicken and he wolfed that chicken down. I mean, he just kept digging and kept digging. He may be a star, but he loved him some chicken. <laughs> He's a very humble, very intelligent, very um, thoughtful or thinking, curious person who doesn't feel like he's arrived necessarily. So that means he has a who, what kind of an un, un, almost unspeakable future. I'm so proud of you and so thankful that you took such a position to produce and play me in, in the movie. I love you, buddy. Come up here and just greet the people. Say something. Uh, he does speak uh, other than be on, on movies. I, I don't know what he'll say. Come on. Chibatel Estreval. Pray for me. It's going to be a journey, but um, I'm excited to, um, to, to try and walk a little bit in the footsteps in this remarkable story. So, um, you know, I hope to um, spend more time here. I hope we shoot here. Um, you know, it would, be, it, would be, it would be amazing to bring the story here and to, to bring all of your experiences and your influences and your knowledge of the time, and so um, you know that would be that would be remarkable. I mean, that's dependent on a few factors, maybe out of my immediate control, but that would be my choice. I know it would be Joshua's as well. So, um, so we hope that will happen. So, thank you very much for your hospitality. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you very much for your amazing words, and um, you know, I'm really delighted to be here. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you, Chiwetel. They'll be meeting with other members of our, not only meeting with, that we'll be through here in about five minutes, we're not, they're only meeting with people who are positive toward me or the message, but people who are detractors to it. Because it wouldn't be fair if we didn't show all the aspects of it. It's not a negative movie, and we want you to spread the word. It, uh, for all those who are concerned that it might cast an unpleasant light toward or you, that will not happen. I would not tolerate it because of my devotion to that school, that ministry, and that man uh, who was uh, like a, 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 uh, a father to me to this day. People portrayed us as being adversarial. We were never adversarial. I mean, we had some knockdown, drag out, drag out 
discussions where he left, I never left him in tears, he left me in tears. Oral can make you cry over the phone, and he did. Um, but he was so desperate that I would not lose what I lost. Could not see what we might find, only what we would lose. And so, um, though part of him, when I finished, he did seem to be a little bit more supportive in my last three and a half hour conversation with him in his home in LA. So all that's in the movie, and, and you'll love it. And um, some people are concerned that, that the church would repel against it, that the fundamentalist Christian world would. But the world has changed, changed so much since 2002, and it continues to change. And there's this new openness, this new willingness. Now, we were at Metro this morning. Uh, there was absolutely no, I mean, of course, Dr. Owens and I are friends. He's friends of, of, of uh, uh, Pastor Lavenhar. And he is a professor at Phillips University, uh, Phillips Seminary, which is where Oral went to school 50 years ago. But it was in Enid, Oklahoma. So they're progressive. Yeah, Oral went to that school. Mm, he got his lesson there. <laughs> he didn't get his degree there, but he built a university that would give him a degree. So he used to say, I don't, I don't have a degree, but I've got PhDs working for me. <laughs> you can't be what you're going to do with that. <laughs> so, I mean, I was devoted to all he is. I was going to talk about, and I'll, I'll use my today's subject next week, what's so amazing about grace, and I'll uh, walk through that with you. Um, Joshua, do you want to greet the people? Do you have anything to say? Please. <laughs> I love this man. We, we, I had not met him personally except by phone until um, I was in New York a couple of weeks ago. Right after I left Boston, I went to New York to minister. But I, on Friday night, I went to see uh, Color Purple. Well, he happened to be there too, just having his wife. They were just there to see the thing. And he was looking for somebody to, to play a Negro. I mean, Nikki over there. And... Uh, I think he found somebody that we like at least. Give Joshua Marston a creative genius that's going to make this thing kick on film. A big God bless you. Thank you, Carlton. Thank you all. Uh, it is, I am humbled. It has been a weekend of humbling. Um, it's been, I, I was once in Tulsa about 20 years ago and it was a very different experience for a very different purpose. And I have to say that being here, spending time with Carlton, with Chuatel, and getting to go to Metro, come here, and see what you all are about, and, and feel the love and the energy in the room. It's so important because it's important to the story, it's important to understand everything that Carlton was doing, all of the work, every, everything that you all have, uh, in order to tell the story also of what he lost and then regained. Um, so that's very, very powerful. And it would not be possible to tell this story without coming here to see it and to witness it and experience it for ourselves. And so I thank you for opening your church and to welcoming, welcoming us and to recounting that story to us so that we can then transform it and put it up on screen for others to experience. So thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. He is the nicest guy. And producer, director, that something will happen. It's in their hands. I prayed for them when I met with the first people within NRP folk. And uh, later on, we begin to talk about the movie. I told him, I said, this is, I don't, this is no accident. I think that the divine energies on the planet has caused this thing to occur at this time. And that these men, who may not use the same verbiage in describing who they are or what they do, it's just a good old-fashioned anointing. As, I, as I've said to you, I believe that we, in some pre-incarnate reality, made a decision. And I say this because it totally takes away from me any victim consciousness that would dictate to my life what it should be. That, and I often say, because I can't prove it, of course, it'd be by conjecture or speculation, 
What if we all, in some pre-incarnate reality, made a decision to come to this planet, this plane or plan, and forgot about it? We just forgot we agreed to come. And in that amnesia, we freaked out and felt, felt we didn't belong or that we were victimized by destiny or creation. Um, he's of Nigerian descent. I am, I, I'm an African-American and what I really am is an American African. An African-American is somebody born in Africa. Right there, what, what country? I could have told you that with your eyes and nose. I, when I came out of her, I said, she looks like an Ethiopian. E uh, that's, that's the term mentioned most in scripture in, in, in a reference to Africa. And, um, but she would be an African-American, an African, an African-American. I mean, he would be a British African. Weren't you born there or were you born in Nigeria? Well, yeah. So he, you're first generation Brit. So he is a, what I said you were. <laughs> He's a British African. I don't know what you white people are. You're going to be something one of these days. I, we'll figure it out. We'll figure out what y'all are supposed to be. No, I'm kidding. Uh, you're Irish Americans. You're Italian Americans. You're German Americans. Talk to me, somebody. So we're all here together. Not only them, we're not just a melting pot. We're a stew. 